Insecure Direct Object References are a subcategory of access control vulnerabilities. If a web application uses user-controllable input to directly access objects such as resources or functions, then an attacker can modify the input to get unauthorized access to the other user's data. During this video, we look at this scenario in action. For the purpose of this video, we use a lab from Web Security Academy and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. This lab has a live chat function and it stores the user's chat transcript on the server's file system and retrieves them using static URLs. To solve this lab, we need to exploit insecure direct object reference vulnerability to find the password of a victim user called Carlos and log in into his account. All right, let's get started and click on access the lab. This is an online shop and as we see the homepage contains the list of products in this shop. There are three links on the top right corner of the page. The home page, which takes the user to the current page. My account, which takes the user to the login page where they need to provide their account username and password to access their account. And we also see a link to live chat page. Let's click on this link and go to the live chat page. We are interested to see how this chat feature works in this application. So let's go ahead and start the chat. We just type a simple message and click on send. As we see, we get a response. The view transcript function allows the application users to download the chat transcript. Let's first turn on burp intercept, then click on view transcript. In the body of the HTTP post request, we see our chat transcript. So it seems the web application is trying to save the transcript. Let's go ahead and forward the request. We get a redirection response from the application. So the application has saved the chat in a text file on the server and now is redirecting us to a static URL to download this text file. The web browser is following the redirection and is sending an HTTP GET request for downloading the transcript file from the server. As we see, the file name is a number, so we are interested to see how the application choose the names for these text files on the server. But for now, let's forward the request. We get the transcript file in the application response. Let's recap how the live chat function works. When a user clicks on the view transcript, two things happen. First, the application saves the chat in a text file on the server, then uses a static URL to download that file from the web server. We are interested to see if the application increments the number in the name of the file that it saves on the server when it is saving the new transcripts. To get a better understanding of how the application choose the name for chat transcripts when saving them on the server, let's send another message and once again click on the view transcript. We see the HTTP post request for saving the chat transcript. We forward this request. So the chat log is saved in a new text file and by looking at the file name, we see the application has incremented the number in the file name. We forward the response. And now we see the get request for downloading the new chat transcript. So we know the application is incrementing the number in the file name each time that it saves a new chat on the server and uses a static URL for downloading them. So if there is no robust access control mechanism in this application, then we should be able to access to a chat belongs to another user by changing the file name to another number. All right, let's right click on the HTTP GET request and choose send to repeater. Then we turn off burp intercept and we go to the repeater tab. For the first attempt, let's forward the request without making any changes. As we see, we get the transcript of our own chat in the body of the response. Since the application increments the number in the file names and our first chat was saved in a file called 2.txt, then the application should have saved another user chat transcript in a file called 1.txt. So let's go ahead and check if this is a correct assumption. So in the HTTP GET request, we go to the file name and change its name to 1.txt, then send the request. So our assumption was correct and as we see the application accessed the 1.txt file on the server and returned the contents of the chat transcript. 
So the application is vulnerable to insecure direct object references and we could access to another user's chat. Looking at the chat transcript, we see the password for the victim user. Let's copy the password and go back to the web browser. In the web browser, we click on my account to go to the login page. We fill out username with Carlos that we got from lab description and also paste the password that we got from 1.txt file that we downloaded from the server and finally click on login. We get the message that we solved the lab and as we can see, we could log in into Carlos account. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in the next videos.